at first glance, Ichimoku charts um, can seem somewhat intimidating with a lot going on when we're looking at markets. But they're also a really powerful way of identifying trends and dynamic support and resistance in a market. I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at um, Ichimoku charts. Uh, it, it's a fairly popular indicator. It's been around for, um, I think, 50 years or so now. And whilst when you put it on the chart, it does make the chart look um, somewhat cluttered, as you can see here, and I'm not a fan of cluttered charts. I think it is a good way of enforcing certain disciplines when it comes to trading. So in this video, I'll talk through the basics of how Ishimoku is constructed. We'll come back, look on the chart. I'll go back, talk about strategies, then we'll come back and have a look at those in the real world. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com, and I thought we'd do uh, another in our series on trading strategies, uh, looking at indicators. This time around, I thought we'd take a look at Ishimoku charts. Um, apologies in advance for any mispronunciation uh, throughout this video. They can be, I think, a bit intimidating when you first look at them. But in this video, I'm going to break down how they're constructed and uh, some simple trading strategies around it. As usual, if you're watching this and you um, haven't subscribed, if you could click on subscribe, uh, support the channel, and it helps us uh, produce uh, sort of timely market content during the week and our occasional series uh, on trading strategies for traders. We'll jump back on the charts in a couple of minutes. Before we do that, let's talk through uh, the construction of Ishimoku charts. So I suppose one way of looking at them, uh, in certain aspects, similar to moving averages, if we're familiar with those, and in other ways, uh, like a, a dynamic form of support and resistance changing as the chart changes. Let's look at the moving average aspect first. We have what's known as the conversion line. This measures the short-term uh, trend in the market effectively. And it's a, a nine-period average, but looking at the highs and the lows rather than just at the closing price. Then we have the baseline or the confirmation line. This is a medium-term average. Looking, if we're on a daily chart, 26 days, so it's a 26-period moving average, uh, again, looking at highs and lows. So we have a short-term moving average and a more medium-term moving average. Then we have the span line, which is a, a lagging line. This is probably looking at the big picture of the trend. Uh, above where the price is trading now, the market's got a bullish bias. Below, the market's got a bearish bias. It's the evolution of the current price in relation to the historical price. Uh, and it's, it's a lagging indicator. It's plotted effectively 26 candlesticks ahead of where it's actually calculated. This will make more sense when we see it on the chart. Then we have the cloud, the Kumu cloud, uh, made out of span A and span B lines. This is our dynamic support and resistance. A wide cloud below the price suggests strong support. Wide cloud above the price, strong resistance. Narrow cloud below the price, weaker uh, support. And the same, weaker resistance for a narrow cloud above the price. As a general rule of thumb, when the price is above the cloud, we're looking to go long. When it's below the cloud, we're looking to go short, expecting further declines. As another rule of thumb, when the price is actually in the cloud, it represents indecision and um, arguably no trade should be taken. Let's look at all of this now on the charts and I'll come back and talk about strategies. So this is uh, actually a goal chart with Ishimoko on it. Let's just walk through some of these lines. So first of all, the conversion lines and the baselines, the ones that are like two moving averages. So I've colored these in uh, light blue and uh, dark gray on my chart. And you can see they're here just in the middle. So the latest signal, we've got to jump to just this point here, June the 17th, where these points crossed over uh, and gave us a signal. And at the point, at uh, that point, you can see the uh, the candles were just above the cloud. So those are the that's the baseline and the conversion line. Then we have the lagging span line. That's in purple on my chart here. So you can see it here above the price uh, as the price is trending up. Then we have the cloud. I think the cloud is is fairly fairly obvious uh, for much of this chart. It's below below the price. So you can see the cloud here. We do get the cloud flipping, crossing over. But at the moment, since uh, early May. And actually to where we are now into late July, uh, that cloud has stayed pretty much green. So I'll talk a bit now about how to use uh, some trading strategies in theory. Then we'll come back onto the chart and look at things in more depth. So a very simple strategy is almost to treat the baseline and the conversion line as moving averages. So, so when they cross over, 
We take a, a buy signal or a sell signal. We'll have a look at those in a second. One way of filtering these signals is uh, to use the span line, to take a buy signal only when the span line is above and take a sell signal off these two lines when the span line is below. Then coming to the cloud, with the Kumu cloud, we can look at uh, breakout signals from the cloud as a sign that the trend is changing. That's one way of trading in. Another way is for looking uh, for a crossover, uh, for the, the cloud, the two lines making the cloud to cross over. And again, uh, a buy signal is stronger when price is above the cloud. A sell signal is stronger when price is below the cloud. So we have quite a disciplined way of trading here if we're going to implement these filters. But let's um, put this into the real world, take a look on the platform and have a look at, at some of these signals. So what, some of the most simple signals um, is a crossover, for example. If we're looking at that baseline and the confirmation line. So again, we're on the gold chart here. We have a crossover down here end of March, positive crossover. And of course, that, that lagging span line was above, suggesting uh, it was a more valid signal. Then we have a, a crossover just in here, we can see. And then the most recent signal, clearly gold has had a, a big run uh, at the time of recording from June to late, late July. The most recent crossover signal was in here. And again, uh, that lagging span indicator was above. So if we were using that as a filter, um, you know, that did well in confirming that as a valid buy signal. Let's take a look at a different market. So we're looking at a daily chart of the NASDAQ 100 here with our uh, Ichimoku uh, on here. So so again, uh, looking at the two crossover lines, we've had a great trend anyway uh, for US stocks off those March 2019 lows. But our buy signal was uh, was last down here. So it's a way away now, but back in, back in April, still positive. But looking at the, the clouds now, let's look at the clouds, uh, to get our signal. So, so the rule of thumb is that we don't trade when the market is in the cloud, but we can trade breakouts and we, cause it acts as dynamic support and resistance. So we did get a breakout, uh, 14th of April through, uh, the cloud. Uh, the market was above the clouds. It's a bullish sign. It's broken out. It came to retest it. We can see here 21st of April, the cloud acting as support. And then we get the crossover with the two borders of the cloud here in the 22nd of May. And since then, uh, the market stayed above the cloud. So again, suggesting, you know, that the positions are bullish. Let's have another quick look at one more market. So this is a uh, pound against the dollar. Fair to say this is a bit of a, a messier chart. We don't have the great big moves so far that we've seen in uh, the Nasdaq and the price of gold. But I think the Ichimoku cloud still still bears out and maybe helps us here. If we go back uh, to June, late May, early June, we saw the price um, breaking out June the 1st through the cloud. We did get a bit of a run from that level there. The market sold off again. It's pulled back into the cloud late June. But again, we do not want to trade when the, when the market's in the cloud, as it suggests in decision. But again, we get a move out of the cloud and a crossover of the cloud, the two cloud borders in early July, around about what the 124.70 level. And since then, the price has moved uh, a few hundred points higher. And you've seen that cloud has acted as fairly good support over the last couple of weeks or so. So I think it, it can take a bit of getting your head around. No indicator is perfect all the time, but as a visual way of looking at dynamic support and resistance, I definitely think Ishimoku charts um, could help quite a few of us when it comes to trading. That's it for our quick introduction on Ishimoku charts. If you have our platform, you can try it out. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. But from me, David Jones and Capital.com, we'll wrap things up there. Good luck with your trading. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.